Hey, 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 people, I've got something here that I think is going to be very interesting to take a look at. This uh, little unassuming box is an ARE20 Digitalker. And ARE looks like it stands for uh, Amateur Radio Engineering. Now, in this video, I don't plan on going into, like, crazy detail with this thing. Like, I just want to kind of do, like, a little demo. We'll do a teardown, and we'll see what's inside. And there's a specific reason why I want to look inside of this thing, and I'll kind of show you why uh, later on. As hard as I've tried, I cannot find any information about this thing, like, anywhere. I've even tried to do, like, Google Lens to see if I can find, you know, like, a, a picture that matches this or another a picture of uh, one of these uh, devices, nothing, like cannot find anything about it. And the way I came across this is I was actually looking on eBay for uh, Digitalker uh, devices. And that's a, a chip that was uh, designed in the, I think the 70s or 80s. I don't remember exactly when off the top of my head, but it's basically like a voice synthesizer. And it's a chip that uh, works together with a few ROMs and you feed it uh, data. And depending on, you know, what's fed to it, it's like a text-to-speech a little system so this thing here when i came across it it caught my attention there wasn't really much of a description about it or anything either so i decided to buy it and i've had this sitting around for a few years now i've been meaning to do a video on this like forever <laughs> if we take a look at the uh the box itself we see that here we've got a speaker grill uh down here on the bottom we have a jack and it looks like it's a, a single conductor jack nothing on the sides so See nothing there, nothing there. On the back, we've got a uh, battery compartment there, and that's just for a 9-volt battery. There is a label on it here, and it does uh, have the model number there, so ARE20 Digitalker. I don't know what this time wave means. And a price of $249. Now, I, I didn't pay anywhere near that amount for this. I think it was like, I don't know, maybe like 40 or $50 that I paid for this, like shipped or something like that. And uh, on the top here, we have a tiny little button. Now, what does that tiny little button do? Well, let me show you something here. I've got a little setup going. Let me show you what it does. All right. So here on the bench, I've got this little breadboard setup. And if you see, I got a uh, my scope here uh, hooked up to the ground and to a pin right here. I've got three crystal oscillators. We have an 8 megahertz crystal oscillator, a 50 and a 66.667 is what's marked on the package there. Now let's take turns putting these into the position over here where I've set up uh, ground and five volts. And then that's the output. I just got a little power supply here providing five volts to uh, power all of these. Well, I mean, not all at the same time, but just like one at a time. And we're also gonna bring up the scope right there on the uh, top left corner. So you can see that the uh, oscillator is uh, producing something here. And this 8-pin one, I put on a socket just because the pins were, like, too short to reach the contacts inside of the uh, breadboard. And even with the socket, it just kind of barely reaches, but it works. So we're just going to plug that in there. And you can see that we've got a, a pulse being uh, produced there by that oscillator. And one thing I didn't know about Visa DSO is you can actually, uh, like, get the um, frequency of something by just clicking on it. So you can do it like that. You see right there we got a little display uh, popped up on the bottom and measure it or go to where you want to measure and we can see that the frequency there measures uh it says 8.02 here but it's kind of hard to get it like really accurate but that's a, a pretty neat feature that i did not know about and i just found out about it, like right before i started working on this okay so that's the uh, 8 megahertz one let's go ahead and plug in the uh, 50 we'll see what that looks like so yeah, that's what that looks like right there we can see obviously it's, it's a lot faster and then the uh, 66 is obviously going to be just a, a bit faster than the 50. There we go. Pretty similar, but just a tiny bit faster. All right. So let's put the 8 megahertz oscillator back into there. I am going to get this little wire that's right here that I've kind of bent like a sort of a hook into. And I'm going to stick that into the bottom of the Digitalker where that uh, jack is. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to the other microphone that I have on the bench here because I want you to hear what it does. So I'm switching microphones now. All right, here we go. Eight point one eight six. 
Now let's switch over to the 50. Do it again. Nine point nine nine nine. And now the sixty six. Six six point six six five. So this appears for all the world to be a talking frequency counter. And like I said, I wish I could find more information about it, but I can't. This may be like one of the only remaining of these units that exists out there. I, like I said, I cannot find anything. And it appears that by this uh, amateur radio engineering that maybe this was uh, a product meant to be used by like, I don't know, ham operators or people, you know, transmitting uh, uh, with radios and things like that. It also has Braille down here. I kind of forgot to mention that. So I guess it, you know, helps like the uh, vision impaired like the only uh, use case I can think of for this thing. Hoarding isn't always a good thing, but sometimes if you're like me and you hoard a bunch of emails, it can come in handy. So I was able to actually go back and find out that I purchased this thing in August of 2019. So it's literally been sitting around for like four years. It's been four years. And uh, I, I mean, obviously I can't go back and look at the actual eBay listing to see all the uh, details and everything. But on the email about me uh, purchasing this thing, it, the title there just said uh, American Radio Engineering ARE 20 Frequency Digit Talker Ham Radio for Blind. And I mean, that was pretty much like the only description because, like I said, I don't remember the details, like even mentioning anything, you know, like specific about this unit or anything like that. So, a moment we've all been waiting for. Let's see what's actually inside of this thing. Now, I have a feeling we're going to find quite a bit of hardware in there because it's, uh, it's a little weighty. And I'm pretty sure it's not just because of the battery on the speaker. Like, it's got a little bit of heft to it. So I'm going to zoom this in a little bit more so that we can get, like, a really good uh, fill there in the screen of uh, this thing. We're going to flip it over. And first of all, I'm going to start by taking the battery out. So that way, if the 9-volt battery snap needs to uh, come out or anything, then it can just slide out. And I can't believe I'm finally getting to this thing here. I'm like so excited to actually see what's inside. It's just been a long time that I've, I've been waiting to look inside of this thing. And I've never opened it myself because I, I wanted to save it for the video. Okay, that's the last screw there, loose. And actually, before I flip this open, I am going to go back and check and make sure that it's actually recording audio. I think it is, but I had a little issue here a little bit ago where... My microphone wasn't picking up the audio, so pause one second, and I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, my audio situation is good. Here we go. So this cover is going to come out, and looks like the battery snap is uh, attached to something that's on this back cover. So the front's probably just going to be the speaker, and uh, I can kind of see it here from the side, and it is. So let's see what is inside of this thing. Oh, holy crap. There's quite a bit of hardware in this. Dude, that's an Intel. What? Okay, the speaker has a... Uh, oh, it's got a connector right here, but it's actually... um. Oh, no, it's not two individuals. I thought it was two individual pins there. So that looks like it'll just come off. Yeah, like that. Okay, so that's the speaker. Let's take a look at that really fast here since that's... Uh, just an 8-ohm speaker. It's uh, attached to the case there with these metal uh, retainers. So the case has uh, pegs molded into it. Those are just pushed in to hold the speaker in place. So it looks like, yeah, this case was uh, purpose designed for uh, something like this. So not much to see there. This is all where all the cool stuff is. And man, they used like all of the room they could inside of this case. You see how the board is like shaped so that it fits around that battery compartment got a, a rom right there it's got a little sticker stuck on the window so it looks like that must have been repurposed because it looks like it's got residue from some old label on there and this chip that's an sc80 c31 so that's um yeah that's a cpu okay never mind i just quickly looked it up it's a microcontroller it's an 8-bit microcontroller 
I guess it's uh, similar to an 80C51. And then there's a, a trimmer a capacitor right there. We got a couple of crystals, LM324, some 7400 series logic looks like. Yeah, 74HC244. I have it upside down. So uh, this says ICM7216. That's going to be RAM. Oh, no, actually, I just looked it up. That's the actual frequency counter. Okay, so, so far, nothing in here. Looks like a text-to-speech chip. So let's take the screws out. Let's see what's on the underneath this thing, because, I, I mean, there's got to be more. It can't just be a CPU or a microcontroller or a ROM and a uh, frequency counter chip. And I'm not going to touch any of these uh, adjustments because I'm, I don't want to, like, throw it off its calibration or anything. Uh, the, although this one here is right by that LM386 uh, amplifier I see, so it looks like that's probably just for a uh, volume. Okay. All right, this is coming out, but this little button here is not going to allow it to come out on this side unless I tilt it out this way. Uh, and this wire here going to the uh, jack is uh, going to have to stay intact because it doesn't have a connector. Okay, opposite side, and yeah, this board is heavy, so there's definitely something on the underside of this. Let's see what it is. Oh, there's nothing there. Okay, so the board is just heavy. Man, so what's actually doing? I guess they are. They must just be using the microcontroller with, um, I guess, data saved on that ROM, and it it must be uh, using that kind of like the synthesizer. There's another chip here I don't know off the top of my head. It's a CA3163. Okay, and that just looks like it's a um, an op amp. So, yeah, this is what's doing the talking. Definitely not what I expected to find in here and not what I was actually hoping to find in here. And right there in the middle where they've got the that ARE logo, it says copyright 1992. Amateur Radio Engineering Inc. So this device is, wow, <laughs> like 31 years old at this point. That crystal there for the CPU, that's a, a 12 megahertz crystal. And this one here, that looks like it's uh, it's most likely for the frequency counter. Yeah, it looks like it, it goes straight into the frequency counter. That's a, a 3.90625 megahertz crystal. These two chips over here, those are 74HC. Uh, th well, one's a 373, the other one's a 374. The 373, that's an octo uh, D type latch. And the uh, 374 is a non inverting uh, D flip flops. This 244 is a, a buffer chip. I think this 7474 down here is also a uh, flip flop. All right, so as cool as this thing is, and I'm actually amazed to see what we actually see inside of this thing. Uh, I am a little bit disappointed, but only because uh, one of the reasons why uh, this was so interesting to me is because what I thought I was going to find inside was uh, one of these chips. This is a, uh, a Digitalker IC. And uh, these two ROMs right here, this SSR1 and SSR2, work together with this. And those are used to uh, produce speech. And I was kind of hoping that these chips were going to be like inside of this and I could actually test these out and see if they worked. Uh, this is a kit that I actually purchased from um, an online retailer, you speak, uh, uh, BG Micro. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, they're no longer around. I guess the uh, the guy that used to run it like passed away. And uh, from what I read, like his, his family couldn't keep the business going. So it shut down, unfortunately. But I do remember that I think that's where I bought this from and it came with the data sheets and everything and I only paid like 15 bucks for this kit and that was like back in the late 90s I believe or it would have been like early uh, 2000s I not it was somewhere in that time period I really don't remember but unfortunately yeah it's looking like I I mean <laughs> there's no way that I could test this with this thing and I thought that that's what the uh, digitalker in the name stood for that it was using this chip uh, a few other things uh, here that we can kind of note. It looks like the battery here, there's a, that looks like a MOSFET down there at the bottom. So that's probably going to be for a reverse uh, battery protection. And then there's a 7805 uh, regulator right there. So that's going to be for like powering all the logic and stuff. A uh, little tantalum cap right there. And we see we've got like a lot of resistors, uh, some capacitors. 
Now, one thing, I don't know if it came through with the audio that I recorded for this, but when you push the button and the device talks, there's like a period of time afterwards where it just kind of sits there making like some high frequency sounds. And I think why that happens is, uh, I think when you push the button here, it must be charging up some capacitor that holds a charge until the device is done talking. And then I'm guessing there's going to be like a pin or something that maybe that's what that MOSFET is for, for keeping power going to the unit until it's, um, it's done. And then that capacitor slowly discharges and then it completely cuts power to the device. Because I've noticed that if you push it and it speaks, and while it's doing that high frequency sound after it's done talking, you push it again, the device won't shut off and it will not speak again until it's uh, completely turned off and the, that sound goes away. So maybe that's what that MOSFET there is doing. It's probably maybe not for uh, reverse protection, but to find all that out would require having to like reverse engineer this entire thing, which I'm actually not going to do in this video. That's going to be a bit of a monumental task uh, for me. Uh, with uh, all these traces kind of like going underneath all these ICs and stuff. I mean, I kind of do want to maybe revisit this and maybe like dump this ROM. Uh, I don't know if I'd be able to dump the contents of this microcontroller. I'd have to see if I can do that somehow. Uh, this here, it, since it's a, like a purpose-built chip, it, I'm pretty sure we could probably, you know, figure out what's going on with that with the data sheets. But yeah, that's uh, what's in this thing, both uh, cool and disappointing at the same time but i mean sometimes things don't quite go the way i i would like but i mean <laughs> whatever it's electronics and I, I think it's kind of fascinating either way so well i hope that was a kind of a cool to take a look at this thing and uh thank you guys for uh, joining me once again thanks for watching and i'll see you guys around the bench